That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about A Man Called Otto, which is the 13th film directed by Mark Forster, uh, and is, of course, a remake of the celebrated 2015 film uh, from Sweden, uh, A Man Called Ova, based on a novel by Fred Frederick Backman. Uh, it is being released, courtesy of Sony Pictures, December 30th, 2022. The director? Mark Forster. Uh, do I know his other films? You do know a couple. Uh, I can only kind of defend maybe something like Monster's Ball or World War Z, uh, but he's usually a director I don't look forward to. Uh, he did that, had the ill-fated Bond film, Quantum of Solace, uh, a terrible adaptation of The Kite Runner. Uh, I haven't seen Finding Neverland, to be fair, about J.M. Barry starring Johnny Depp and Kate Winslet, uh, and I haven't seen his last two films, All I See Is You and Christopher Robin. Uh, I think the plot synopsis tells pretty much the entire movie, so I'm just going to read it. Otto is a grump who's given up on life following the loss of his wife and wants to end it all. When a young family moves in nearby, he meets his match in quick-witted Marisol, leading to a friendship that will turn his world around. So Otto is Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Tom Hanks has forced has been forced to retire from his job, but it's not really clear what he does for work. Uh, I think in this film version, he works in some kind of construction lumber company. His wife died of cancer. Six months ago. And when they say, whoever wrote this synopsis, because it's a PG-13 movie, it, it makes it sound kind of like easy, easy breezy, but this man tries to kill himself five times, mm -hmm. twice by hanging himself, once by blowing his brains out, once by carbon monoxide poisoning, and once by like lying across a railroad track. Well, he's contemplating throwing himself on the track, but is merely interrupted each time. Of course, he doesn't execute any of those, but um, the reason for that is like life. I think the meaning of the movie is like life. There, like, like there's more to his life. He has purpose. So. His neighbors are this family. Mm -hmm. This Mexican family moves in. Uh, Marisol is played by Mariana Trevino, who is a breath of fresh air in the film. I will give her that. But this is a, a cheesy, treacly crowd pleaser. So, like, she provides distraction. He has an old friend who they kind of are like frenemies now, who's being taken advantage of by like a real estate developer. So, Played by Mike Berbiglia. So Otto feels like he needs to like help his friend. So there's more meaning in his life. A cat, a stray cat comes into it. But ultimately, he does die kind of early. Because the film starts in what, like 2018? Yeah, I was so distracted because there are so many moments where he's talking to his wife's headstone. It's like... And she died six months ago and it's 28. I'm like, why is this film set in 2018? It's because at the very, in the last like five minutes of the film, there's a progression and he dies more, you know, naturally because he also has a degenerative disorder. He has an enlarged heart. Which I think is funny that he tried to kill himself so many times and then he just dies naturally a few years later. You just need to go on some marathons, sir. But he, when in his will, he basically leaves everything to Marisol and her family, including his home, a bunch of money, that is supposed to be used for their college education. A, a brand new car. Yeah. Because um, the family who moved in next door, the Mexican family, it was made clear that they were renting. Yes. And another uh, facet that's also retained a lot of uh, David McGee's adaptation, he's keeping a lot of the same beats and really only outfitting things that are, you know, customary to our culture rather than in Sweden. But uh, this is, you know, predicated on a particular community of a, of a private street uh, that had is, you know, kind of been built from the ground up by uh, the Tom Hanks character and his friend who he's had a following out with basically over their taste in cars. Uh, I did, I hadn't seen the original. I knew it was nominated for uh, Best Foreign Language Film in 2017, I believe. And in 2016, I didn't realize it was the highest grossing foreign film in the U.S., uh, so in the the film the original film is very much also a crowd pleaser, but there's consistently a sense of discomfort in that film because the lead character, who kind of reminded me a lot of my own grandfather, you kind of never know how far he's gonna go, and how, 
how angry he really is. Whereas Tom Hanks is always very grumpy and contained and is doing a performance that is a lot like if Mr. Rogers wanted to do, be Clint Eastwood in Grand Torino hmm. without all the racial epithets. And it, the, the score, the soundtrack selections, it's all very timed, very obviously to, to be a big weepy. And obviously that worked for a lot of people that were in the audience last night. And on cue, all the moments where somebody is meant to go, aw, many people were doing that. Uh, like I said, there are some nice moments, uh, especially I do think Trevino and the family in the original film that moves next door are Iranian. Uh, so there's a whole other subset of issues going on with that culture clash. But I think Trevino does a really fine job of being quite likable and sweet. Uh, but it, it, to me, it is not enough to save this film by any means. And some of the what McGee keeps in is so weird. There's this this recurring master and margarita Mikhail Bulgakov uh, reference and of course with the cat that comes into play that I, I find weird. There's a situation with a clown in the hospital that I, like literally beat per beat and the editing is exactly the same, which uh, I don't know, it just, which if you're familiar with the first film will only enhance how overly rehearsed I think this feels. What else you got? Uh, one of the other... In the original, the man, there are a lot of flashbacks because we, we slowly piecemeal why, how he's become to be a widower, why they were childless. And there's, of course, a great tragedy that explains all of that. But the young man playing Ova in the original has quite a striking screen presence. And I did not feel the same about the young Otto in this. And I didn't realize until afterwards that that is Truman Hanks uh, playing a younger version of his father. And... It, it feels like maybe Mr. Forster's not, w wasn't really keen on directing anybody to push them beyond their <laughs> limits, I guess. But this is a Hanks family film. Uh, Rita Wilson is also a producer. It just all feels very manufactured and forced and uh, exactly the type of package that you would expect um, an American entity to kind of just crib from something popular and sentimental and schmaltzy that was made across the sea but what would you give it i would give it two out of five because i really don't see the point of it I, I i i don't know that i am in absolutely in love with the first film but i do appreciate where what what it's doing it it's manipulations are less obvious and i think that because anytime you watch a film we very manipulate it to some extent and the gracefulness of any kind of film production is how unaware you are of that manipulation. And I was never not aware of that in A Man Called Otto. Mm. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>